we've been discussing the theory of open economy equilibrium and we've gone through just a lot of details in understanding how the market for the real interest rate, the market for loanable funds, and the market determining the real exchange rate, the market for foreign currency exchange are connected. And it was really kind of, if we think about it, it's we were thinking about the variables that are connecting all of this, the key variables in all of these markets, which is savings, investment, um, net capital outflows, net exports, and we were thinking about how they are all connected, and then kind of thinking through some of the extra terms that we've been using, trade deficit to trade surplus, when we've been thinking about appreciation or depreciation, and how they're all connected. So now that we've spent some time kind of going through the details, excruciating details, now we can kind of think through some policy implications. And so I'm going to take us over here to a cleaned up version uh, of what we've previously been looking at. And what I want to think through here is, all right, so let's say we've got this base case. The economy is current. It's an open economy, right? We've got, we've got net exports. We're thinking about what's actually going on. And there is some sort of steady state real interest rate and real exchange rate in our foreign exchange markets and in our domestic market. And what we want to think through is, well, what are some of the things that would shift this or that would change it? And I think the main thing, or, or like one of the policies that always gets discussed in this market uh, or in these markets is what happens when we're running persistent government deficits. So let's kind of mark this out here. And we're going to say, let's, let's take a look at persistent, persistent government deficits. And if you re and we'll kind of just to simplify this, we're going to because we know that the that the American government has been running uh, government deficits for uh, for decades now. We've or, well, mostly for decades, right? Except for kind of a blip in the in the late 1990s. And we want to think about kind of what what how that would affect kind of our markets as we think about them in these cases. So we let the persistent government deficit, and if you remember when we had a closed economy, we had kind of gone through this and described it. Now the only change is we've got an open economy. So uh, what is it that's really going on here? Well, I'll kind of refresh our memories here. We know that savings, right, and if we kind of reorder the savings and GDP uh, formula, right, if we, if we remember that, we know that savings is equal to private and public savings. And so what is private savings? Well, private savings is Y minus taxes, right? Output minus taxes that are paid minus consumption. And this, right, this is what we called private. Private savings in the economy. And then we said, well, it's also the private savings and then it's also the, uh, right, it's also the, the public savings. And what is the public savings? Well, we want to cancel out the, the taxes there. So we've got taxes that the government would take in minus all the spending that the uh, government would be spending as well. And so when this is positive, there's public savings. When there's negative, right, there would be public deficits there. And so we've got public we have public savings there as well. So what happens? Well, we want to think about a case where spending increases, right, where we have spending increasing and it reduces public savings. So that's kind of the, the case that we've been discussing with, with, uh, with government deficits in the past. And so what would that do? Well, if our spending is increasing, that that's going to increase this G right here, right? It's going to increase the government expenditures and it's going to lower our public savings. And so that's going to have a shift right here to the left of our supply of savings of loanable funds in the market. And so we would shift to this yellow, right? And it could be any number of things, right? But we would shift to this new supply. And again, we're just talking about this generically. And so that's going to shift us right here to this new point. We would, we would reduce the quantity of loanable funds in the domestic market. And as a result, it would also increase, right? We would now move to this new equilibrium real interest rate. That can be reflected right here as well. If we just kind of cross this all the way over, so we now have this new level of equilibrium interest rate, real interest rate. And there's nothing here, right, because if you remember, uh, and let me change the color to keep this consistent, right, what is the demand? Well, the demand is our, and it's right, it's our, it's our investment plus our net capital outflow, our, our, our domestic investment and our foreign investment, right, is kind of one simple way to think about that on the demand side. 
And so nothing is changing here on the net capital outflow line. And so what would we do? Well, we would just move to this new point here, right? We would move to a lower net capital outflow, right? Given a higher real interest rate. In essence, we would be moving right towards a trade deficit as well. Our, our government spending, right? The persistent government deficits that is that is a result of increased government spending would be pushing us more towards a trade deficit. And we can kind of think about that in this case here, right? What do we know? We know that the supply of uh, of funds in the market for foreign exchange currency for foreign currency exchange would then be here. It would shift if we're putting all this together, it would shift here to the left and we would have supply all market as supply to there. And what is that going to do? Well, on the market for our currency, for our real exchange rate against other currencies, it should increase the dollar, right? So it sh we should see some appreciation. So what's going to happen here? Our equilibrium real exchange rate would increase. I'll mark that as an increase here. And that's going to, we know that we've talked about this before, what does this mean? Well, that means that we can purchase more of another currency with one dollar, right? And so this is really what we're seeing here would be an appreciation. Uh, appreciate. Uh, appre oh, jeez, I keep messing that up there. Let me erase it so that it's clear here. Appreciate. And so our currency would be appreciating here as a result. As I said, it would also be forcing us towards a little bit more of a trade deficit. And one of the things that we can take a look at is as this market, we're kind of like as we think about what this market is doing right now, or as these markets are doing right now, this is something that we are currently doing in the United States. We have had a persistent government uh, deficit. And there's a few different things that the economic theory would be indicating to us, right? The first is that we would be uh, the fir I'm sorry, the first is that we would be thinking about how it is increasing the real interest rate on our markets. The second thing that we would want to think about is that it's actually right kind of what do we see here in the net capital outflow? Well, it would be forcing us from this point of net capital outflow towards this lower point of net capital outflow. And what do we know about the net capital outflow? Well, that is the difference, right? It is net capital outflow is the purchase of foreign assets by domestic residents minus the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents. In essence, right, our net capital outflow is becoming more negative, right? It's becoming more, I'll kind of mark it here, it's becoming more negative and a more negative uh, net capital outflow is associated with trade deficits. It's associated with how does this balance over here? Well, that means that we would have a situation where exports would be falling, would be less than our imports. And so we can actually see here now how all these markets are connected that we can have a government deficit, right? That before we were just analyzing and able to see that it is increasing our real interest rate and there would be a certain number of things, right? As a result of that, we should see some crowding out that we would have less uh, funds that are loaned out as a result, right? Because uh, these demanders, these borrowers would have to pay a higher rate and they choose not to because maybe they won't make as much money on that. Uh, maybe the project becomes net negative as a result. So they choose not to uh, make those investments. That's the decrease in loanable funds that we see here. We also see though that in an open economy, it's it's having a few effects over here. The, the first is that it's pulling us towards, right? It's pulling us towards trade deficit. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have a trade deficit. However, we do currently have a trade deficit where our imports are greater than our exports. So in essence, we're incentivizing imports. And how are we doing that? Well, it's partly because we're doing this because the result of our government deficits is that it's increasing, right? Kind of macroeconomic theory would tell us that it's increasing our, it, we're, we are seeing appreciation of our real exchange rate. And that's how all of these connect through. I think it's a really important thing to kind of be able to wrap our heads around because you see it in the news all the time, it gets discussed. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of individuals who kind of gloss over the connections here, or maybe they don't even make the connection at all. I think it's an important thing for you to be able to understand because if you have a business that is selling internationally, right? If you are, if you are an exporter of a good, 
um, then the real exchange rate, the real interest rate are very important to the success of your business and the things that the government could be doing would very much impact it. And then we can also think about some other things that would be shifting supply to the right, right, or things of that nature and how it falls through.